Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. And I want to welcome everybody back to a, another video. And I'm continuing on with the 31 days of Faboween. And today we're going to talk about So Weird, which was a Disney Channel original series from 1999, so 25 years ago. That was basically, it was x-files for kids um it was a little little more darker a little more edgy a little more serious at least in the first couple seasons and it was uh you know disney kind of branching out and doing some some other things like i said it was kind of like x-files but for a younger audience but i have always really liked this show i always thought it was really cool and i gave it a watch this month because it fits for this month and to celebrate 25 years and figured what the hell this fits in with October this fits in with what we're doing let's talk about it so why not but before we jump into this as always if anyone would like to send in a paid request you may do so down below in the description box there is a link to my PayPal account sorry I had like a hair in my mouth um, it's still in there <laughs> hold on fuck it I'll get it later uh, it does no amount is too big sorry no amount is too small just think about it before you send it in and please 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 send it in as family and friends if you send it in as goods and services PayPal will take a cut of it and I will kick it back and you can resend it as properly or you don't have to send it in at all that's your choice but just letting you know what the deal is it does not have to be just a movie review. It could be a TV series, cartoon, comic book, video game, music, random thoughts, ranch streams, commentaries, and anything in between. That's what the paid request is set up for. So again, uh, if you're interested, go ahead, send it in. I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. For those of you that have sent them in before, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. It means you guys actually care about what I say and do here on the channel. You want to see me try some different things. It does motivate me to keep wanting to make videos. So it's a win-win for everybody. You guys get more of the type of videos that you would like to see me cover here on the channel. I keep making them. And at the end of the day, everybody goes home happy, just like they used to say at Blockbuster. So thank you. But so weird. Um... This is not one that gets, I mean, at least to me, at least in my opinion, this is not one that gets brought up that much anymore. And this is back in the late 90s when Disney Channel really exploded. A lot of people don't, I don't think they realize how long the Disney Channel has been on. It's been on since the 80s. But I think for many years, number one, it was, you had to, buy the the cable package back in the day like we i think for the longest time it was not in the basic cable package because we didn't get it until i think until we moved up here to pennsylvania i don't think we had the disney channel when we were in baltimore maybe we did but i think it was one of those extra channels you had to get back in the day you know back when everybody had cable um but yeah, I think it was it was one of those extra package deals. And for the most part back then, I mean, they just kind of re-ran the older stuff and they might have some new stuff here and there. I don't think it was really until the 90s, the mid to late 90s, when they took advantage. They they blew it up. They added a lot of original programming like this and, and new cartoons and movies and everything. And then it kind of blew up from there. And now I think it's in, it's the standard in every in every package but yeah because i don't remember i don't remember ever having it in baltimore because we had cartoon network we had nickelodeon i don't think we got disney until we moved up here i guess the the cable company that we had in baltimore didn't carry it or uh it just wasn't available you know in general packages till later i don't know because the place where we go camping, which I'm actually going to, well, at the time of this recording next weekend, but whenever this is uploaded, whenever you see it, um, 
I think they always had it, so it would be cool when we go up there and we would be able to watch it. But I don't know. I just feel that this show doesn't really get brought up. It doesn't get talked about maybe as much as I would like it to because this is one that I always enjoyed. I remember watching it as a kid. I remember watching it when it was on. And it was only, it basically was only on the time that it ran. And then I think maybe a year after it ended. And then it just completely disappeared from the, from the airwaves forever. I do have a, a, a DVD set that I made because the episodes are all out there. Um, I think, I think it was on Disney Plus, and then they took it off, but I think they put it back on. I don't know. I don't have... Well, actually, we do have Disney Plus, but I don't pay for it. So there you go. And other people do. So there's that. But I don't pay for it. But I don't I don't ever watch it. We have it upstairs. I think my brother got it because he changed the phone plan, and it was included in the phone plans. I don't know. But I, I don't ever watch it. I don't use it. But it might be on there. I'm not sure. But yeah, I mean, it was only on for the, the the two years that it ran, and that they did three seasons in two years, and then it was on, th- I think, another year, and then it just disappeared. And then they took it off. Um, but I remember watching it back then, and really liking it, and I still really like it. It was cool to go back and watch this show after over 20 years, I guess, at this point. And I still really like it. I still think it is very well done. I think it was one of the better original shows that they did, uh, even now. And and I do enjoy a lot of the shows from this era. I love this one. I love the famous Jet Jackson, if you can find those. I love the Jersey, if you can find those. Uh, Lizzie McGuire, even Stevens. You know, these were the good, the 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 original Proud Family before they brought it back and it went super woke. That's the non-woke version. Um, you know, Kim Possible, Dave the Barbarian. There were there there was good shows on Disney Channel when I was a kid, but this one always stood out to me because I was always into horror. I was always into sci-fi. I was always into the spooky stuff, even as a kid. So this one stood out because it had that in there. And I think at the time, Disney was trying to branch out and do some different things and appeal to different appeal to different audiences, if I could talk, um, and try some different stuff. Sometimes it worked. Sometimes it didn't work. But I think this may be the only time that they did a series like this it, like a series to compete with well at this point goosebumps and are you i think are you afraid of the dark was still on because they brought it back for those two later seasons so it might have still been on at this time but goosebumps was done so they didn't really have anything to compete with but i guess they were just branching off and trying different things they wanted to appeal to different audiences and and, and garner some different stuff which is fine and I wish that they did that more, but no, they stuck to what they knew. What they knew, they stuck to what was going to make money. They stuck to what was going to get ratings in. So there you go. But like I said, I always really dug this show, and I was watching it, and there were episodes that I remembered. I was like, okay, yeah, I remember this one. Yeah, this one was cool. I like this one, you know. So it's not like I went into this completely blank. You know, but again, I I always really liked this show. I always thought it was something different. It was something unique. Unfortunately, it didn't last long, and unfortunately, Disney never really jumped into this territory again. Even with the movies, even with the the Disney Channel original movies, when they would do the Halloween ones, I mean, none of them are are, are scary. None of them are, are freaky or, or darker. They're pretty clean cut they're pretty family friendly but it would have been cool if maybe they did that so there you go but before i get too deep and gushing and everything into this the plot of the show is there's this young girl teenage girl fiona and she is the daughter of a rock singer of a rock star and she goes on tour it's her and her mom her older brother and they have 
different people that are in the band and work with the band and stuff. And they go and they travel around the country while she plays. This is the first tour that she's done in a number of years because her husband died. Fee's father died in a mysterious car accident. And she wanted to get off the road and take care of her kids, so she's going back on the road. This is the first time she's done this in, in a long time. Fiona is really into the paranormal and the things that people can't explain and the things that people don't know about and she runs a website and this was in 1999 so you have to put it into perspective and she runs this website where she talks to people and everything and as the show goes on all these weird things happen they go to these different towns and something different happens in the town they're out on the road something goes on and and it just it kind of goes into that x-files territory where most of the episodes are Monster of the Week, but there is a, a couple of few episodes in the show where they kind of have an overarching story, but it doesn't really go anywhere. There's a couple episodes that deal with the Will, Willow the Wisp, and Willow the Wisp challenges Fiona. Fiona defeats him, and she starts to get some answers about her dad. She finds out that her dad didn't really die in a car accident. Her dad kind of had one foot in the other world and they were coming to get him and that's how he really died and then the final episode of season two her dad appears to her and explains everything to her and everything's going to be okay and there's nothing to worry about and then in the third season they switched it up because the lead actress wanted to leave the show so they brought in a new character um her name is annie and she's a friend of the family. She has kind of the same deal where she knows about the paranormal and everything. And she hangs out with the family to go for the last season and do the same thing. But that was it. So there you go. So like I said, it's X-Files. It, it's, you know, that kind of thing for children. You know, it it is, even for 99 when the show started it is kind of dark i mean like i said it it deals with you know death and the afterlife and and where people go and and what happened and you do find that out about the lead character and they do deal with i mean they did like a, a werewolf episode they did a vampire episode there's a bunch of episodes with ghosts there's you know, haunted artifacts. One one episode that I really like, one episode that I remember is there's a piece of driftwood that's haunted and the bus driver, the tour bus driver gets it and he becomes like this captain, like this pirate captain and wants to kill everybody and, you know, that got pretty intense. So, I mean, this show, they definitely pushed what they could do and what they could get away with and they went into some dark territories. There was an episode with a vamp with vampires. There was an episode where there was a firefighter who was played by the guy that played Randolph in the Free Willy movie. So there's some familiar guest stars in here too. And he was a firefighter that saved. I don't know why I said firefighter. Sorry, if I, I got my accents coming out now, y'all. Yeehaw. Anyway, um, there, he was a firefighter that pulled. Fiona's dad out of the wreckage and was dealing with the trauma and the PTSD from that in 1999 on the fucking Disney Channel. So they definitely went as far as they could go. They 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 pushed the show as far as they could and I think it's never been confirmed, but I think people complained, parents complained, which is why season 3 had none of that. So the first two seasons when Fiona was the lead character, yeah, it was it was pretty heavy. It was dark, you know. It 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 dealt with some pretty mature elements. And then season three, when they brought in Annie, they were just kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, this guy, he's a he's a wizard. Okay, we got to go hang out with this wizard. This guy has visions. Okay, well, what do you see? And it lost all of those elements. And I think what happened was that parents complained, people complained in 2000, you know, and that's why the third season didn't have any of that. It was pretty cut and dry. It was pretty straightforward. They were just, you know, let's go here. 
Let's go there. Oh, this guy, you know, he has this toothpick, and the toothpick did this, you know, and it's like, okay. And, the, and I like the third season, don't get me wrong, but it does not hold a candle to the first two because the first two was, you know, as, as far as they could take it. Season three it was just like, all right, we got 26 episodes, we got to burn here, you know, let's just go. Like, there's one episode where it's a Ouija board, you know, and it's like, okay, really, a Ouija board? There's one, the, the other episode, which I actually remember this one, and I remember watching it as a kid and watching it now. There's one where Fia, or uh, Annie, sorry, and the other character, they get these bracelets, and the bracelets are like a time machine, and they go back to the 70s in detention, and they can't get out of the room, and I'm like, okay. So they really scale back on what they could do because I guess parents complained, I guess people complained, and they didn't want to, they didn't want to lose ratings or whatever, and that was it. So, again, I do like the series as a whole, but I think when they got to the third season, they really just dumbed it down, and they were just like, okay, well let's, let's just not scare anybody, because, I mean, nothing, nothing ever scares me. Like I, somebody asked me that on a stream re, at the time that this is recording the previous stream that I did, but whenever this video gets uploaded a couple of days later or what have you, somebody asked me, you know, was there any TV shows that scared you as a kid? No. Was there any movies that scared me as a kid? No. Nothing scares me. Okay, <laughs> like I'm even as a kid, I was pretty fearless. So. You know, this never freaked me out. I was like, oh, cool, it's about demons and it's about monsters. This is my kind of show. So, um, but I guess the, you know, majority rules, as they say, you know, enough people wrote letters, enough people complained to the Disney Channel. So they took all those elements out of season three and it just became, you know, uh, so weird light. But oh well. But there were, like I said, there was a lot of really cool stuff that they did. There was a, the one of the, I think they only did one. There was a Halloween episode, and it dealt with zombies. And Henry Winkler, the Fonz himself, was one of the zombies because he was actually one of the producers. And if I ever meet Henry Winkler, I will ask him, like, how, how did that happen? How did you become a producer? What was it like? You know, were you really involved with it or was it just hey can we put your name on it you know we'll pay you five grand a week or whatever you know because he was great in that episode there was like i said the uh the the haunted driftwood where the guy was losing his mind um you know the willow wisp willow the wisp episodes were well done there is one episode where it was basically just a whole concert because the lady that plays the mom is Mackenzie Phillips from the Mamas and the Papas fame. So it was cool to get to hear her do that. And that's another thing I do really like. I like that the show is set against music. The backdrop is music. Um, rock music. So that was a big thing for me too. So that's another reason why I really like the show because I'm a big music buff, as you all know. So that really sticks out. Um, but yeah, I mean, even with the third season, I don't think there was any episodes that were particularly bad or awful. It's just that they, when they got to that point, it wasn't like scary anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like you didn't, you didn't feel that fear anymore or what have you. Like, oh my God, these characters could really die or what have you. So, and, and no character died on the show. Like if they died... They just, you know, they went to the other side or whatever. You didn't see any of that stuff. Because, again, it's a kid's show. You can't have that on there. Now, you could probably get away with it. Because Christ only knows what they put on the on the Disney Channel. Oh, and yeah, this is like before the Disney Channel wanted to have sex with your kids. So there's that. But God only knows what they put on the Disney Channel now. The show was... And another kind of X-Files connection... The show was shot in Vancouver, Canada, where the first five seasons of The X-Files were shot. So there you go. Um, that's the other connection. But there was a good cast. Um, the lead girl for the first two seasons, Fiona, was p played by Cara Delizia. 
And boy, let me tell you, when I was a kid, when this show was on, I had the hugest crush on her. I thought she was the cutest girl in the world. I just had nothing but, you know, the hugest crush on her when this show was on. And she's still cute because I've seen recent pictures of her. She still looks exactly the same. Um, but she was she was good. Uh, I really liked her performances in the show. Very emotional um, for a lot of it, but it's with the stuff that you're dealing with. You know, it, it can be pretty emotional. There was an episode where, actually an episode that I really liked, where there was a banshee that she thought was going to kill her grandfather and the emotions with that and dealing with family. You know, there is a lot of episodes where she cries you know, there is a lot of episodes where she gets pretty worked up, and I'm sure that was daunting and, and not uh, not the best to get through as a child. But I always enjoyed her performance. I always thought she did really good. She was a good choice. And like I said, yes, I just had the hugest crush on her when I was a kid. I just thought she was the cutest thing. Um, and she... She still is. So, like I said, I've, I've seen some recent photos and she's still really cute, but too bad she's married. Um, Mackenzie Phillips played the mom, Molly. Uh, she is a real life musician. She did the theme song and she did other songs throughout the show, which was cool. Like I said, there is one of the, one of the last episodes of season two was basically like a concert. She played like five songs in it and the kids were trying to deal with it and, and other things were going on and I thought that was cool and I, I like I really like the theme song and I like hearing her you know perform throughout the show as, as an actress and as a musician of course most famously she was in American Graffiti but I guess this could be her signature role if I ever meet her this is something I would definitely bring up because it's a classic as far as I'm concerned um, and she was great. I really enjoyed her performance. Uh, Patrick Levis plays the older brother who, at the time, uh, was actually featured quite a bit in Disney. Um, Eric Von Detten plays the the son of, of the bus driver and the manager. And him and Patrick Levis, of course, were in Brink. A couple years before this, Patrick Levis was also in uh, Miracle on Lane 2, another Disney Channel movie. But I like him. I thought he did well. Eric Von Detten, my boy, EVD, he's fine. Unfortunately, he's not in the show that much. He's in the first season. He's in all the episodes of the first season. The second season, he's about in half of it. And then the third season, he just pops up as a guest star. And then his character had a brother who's actually played by Blake Lively's brother. He took over. He's the guitar player in the band. I thought he did fine, but I just like Eric Von Detten more. I wish we got to see more of him and Patrick Levis because their chemistry was really good. Of course, they had already worked together, so that was already there. But it would have been nice if, if they worked a little bit more together. And the guy that played the bus driver, the tour bus driver, he was pretty cool. There's this running joke throughout the series where he's like, yeah, you know, I was... I was on the KISS reunion tour, and then they took a break, so now I'm doing this, but they might call me back. And it's like a running gag throughout the show, which I really like. Um, but good cast, you know, and then uh, the girl that comes in in the third season, Annie, is played by Alex Johnson. Um, she also, uh, she was actually, before the show even started, she was already a musician. She still is. She's put out a bunch of records and... Uh, I think mostly in Canada because she's Canadian, does does her touring and stuff, which is cool. But she gets to sing and play in the show, which I thought was cool. Like I said, I really one of the things I really like is that it's set it is set against the backdrop of music. That's very fresh to me. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. And I thought she did good. Like I said, when she came into the show, it kind of dumbed it down. But she did good. I do like her performance. I like that she was able to incorporate her music into the show as well. And uh, she was really cute. She still is. Again, I've seen recent pictures of her, but she was really cute. I don't know what it is about these cute Canadian women, but maybe I need to move to Canada. I don't know. <laughs> um, 
but you know she did fine the special effects are exactly what you would think it's 90s disney they're not the best it's a cheap it was a low budget show i know it was the disney channel but it was still low budget but the special effects are not that great can't complain or i i can complain but you don't want me to and also because the show was set against the backdrop of music, there is some guest stars. Uh, Bo Diddley actually pops up in an episode, which is cool. And the Moffats. The Moffats, the first time I heard of these guys was this show back in the day. They were a, a band. I think they're still around, actually. They're a Canadian band, and they're all brothers. And they play this, I guess their biggest hit would be the, sh the song Misery, which is in the show. And I really, really enjoy that song. Um, they play it in the show. And, and I remember at the time, Disney Channel actually would show the music video in between. You know, they would show in between the shows and the movies and stuff. There would be like a 20 minute block where they would show music videos and they would play that one quite a bit back in the day. So that was cool. Um trying to think is there anything else i want to hit before we kind of start wrapping things up here now the show got canceled because it hit the magical syndication number of 65 episodes which again is kind of the back well back now it's all completely different but back then that was kind of the unwritten unspoken rule once your show would hit 65 episodes which was enough to syndicate it they would cancel it. Um, but Disney, I don't think Disney, I don't think they ever syndicated this one. But they barely did that. I think the only two they ever did that for was Even Stevens and Lizzie McGuire because I remember watching those on WGN, but they would come on at like midnight back in, you know, like the early to mid, like the late 2000s or like maybe 2010, maybe. But they would, again, they would come on at like midnight, so I'd have to stay up and watch it. But they never syndicated this one, but that was the kind of the, the unspoken, unwritten rule that they had for a lot of their shows. Because if you look at a lot of their shows, a lot of them only have 65 episodes because back in the day, that was the number you needed. Because you could repeat, you know, if you had a 65 episode show you could repeat it four times a year, all 65 episodes, or if it was 13 episodes, you could repeat it more. Um, those were the numbers back then, 13, 65, 22, because you could shop them out and stuff, but they never did that with this show. I don't know what it did ratings-wise. I couldn't find any of that information, but I'm sure that it did well. Um, you know, I'm sure that people tuned in. I'm sure people watched it and enjoyed it back then, myself included. Why this never had an official DVD release or a VHS release back in the day is beyond me. Disney is, is notorious for that. They are notorious for you know owning now everything and not releasing even a fraction of it on home video. But you can find it... Uh, you can find this online pretty easily, like I did. There's the the set that I have. The quality's not that bad because I think for a while they were just off-air recordings. They were just VHS recordings. But the one that I have, I don't know if they streamed it somewhere or they pulled it from somewhere. But the quality I have is not that bad. Again, it's, it's a little bit better than VHS because again, it was a show that was shot 25 years ago. It was shot in standard definition. And it was in full screen. So there you go. But hopefully, possibly, maybe one day, this will get some kind of legitimate official release because it deserves it. I doubt that they would do features. I doubt that they would get interviews on there. But a guy can dream, can he? But at the end of the day... I always really enjoyed this show. I always thought this show was really solid, um, whether it was then or now. And now that I've talked about it and everything, I, I kind of want to watch it again, you know. But it is one that I've always enjoyed. And really good stuff. There's some really interesting elements. I thought the cast was good. Everybody had good chemistry. They really pushed the envelope of what they could do story-wise, at least for the first two seasons. And it's just a good time. 
excuse me, it's just a good time. And we can't complain about that, can we? No. But anyway, as always, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Take care of yourselves. And like I said, this is pre-recorded, so I will upload it at a later time. But, you know, you know the drill by now, probably better than I do. We'll get into whatever we got to get into from here on out. So as always, once again, take care. Thank you. And we'll talk to you soon. Later.